I for one can't believe it's February already. It feels like just yesterday that I was sitting on the couch watching the TV and raising a glass to 2021. Although actually that is what I was doing yesterday and the day before that and pretty much every day since last March. But there's still a lot of year ahead of us, a lot can happen in that time, and Visionary Realm CEO Chris Rowan recently made a rare appearance to tell us what's on their to-do list, or I guess you could say the New Year's resolutions for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. As always, if you don't want to miss any Pantheon development updates, hit the subscribe button now because that's exactly what this channel is dedicated to. I'm not affiliated with the project, I've just been following it for a long time, so I like to take what I learn and condense it down just to make it easier for you to track the project as well. You may remember around the end of last year, I released a video which detailed the state of the game as we know it, and used that to estimate whether Alpha would be on the table for 2021. But now, to kick off this year's series of developer roundtables, none other than the CEO of Visionary Realms, Chris Rowan, was interviewed by community manager Ben Kilson Walters to officially tell us what's on their agenda. He started off by saying that the primary objective is to use their new evaluation build, which you can see here, to continue to develop relationships with potential investors and publishers. This allows the team to show them rather than just tell them what Pantheon fundamentally is, which is a really effective tool to help convince them to inject additional funding into the project. They're already off to a great start with this, as Visionary Realms recently announced a seven-figure investment in Pantheon. And in this roundtable, Chris said that they have several other meetings already lined up. They of course used that funding to expand the team and accelerate their momentum. In fact, they already announced two new hires this year and are looking for at least one more at the moment. So business development is priority number one. But of course, the main thing that most of the people in the community want to know about is what that means for game development and specifically alpha testing. I think it's no secret we're driving hard toward alpha in 2021. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, um, again, the, the company is throttled by available resources and um, with the right resources, um, it's something that can definitely be accomplished. As nice as that is to hear, that statement on its own may not mean much. Although I'd argue that even if it was an exact date for when Alpha would start, that still wouldn't mean much. Dates change all the time in game development, so it's not so much about when, but how. The couple of predictions VR made in the past about when Pantheon would be an Alpha of course did not come to fruition, but I think it's worth noting that when that happened, they said we should be an Alpha by the end of the year, and then just left it at that. They didn't elaborate further. But in this case, there seems to be more substance behind what Chris is saying, because instead of just saying that that's their hope, he laid out an actual plan with steps that they can take that will lead them to Alpha. So first, let's start with the criteria that need to be fulfilled for Pantheon to be considered ready for Alpha. So, all major features, working, playable, if not polished, all races, classes, core abilities, enough zones and content sufficiently tuned, um, then processing network and customer service uh, resources prepared to support the player base, um, and then finally, uh, a, a big load testing day with the pre-alpha testers where um, everybody just tries to beat the crap out of the game and crush it um, is going to be really important to getting into alpha. Okay, so for those of you taking notes at home, let's review real quick. All major features, all races and classes, core abilities, sufficient zones and content, networking, customer service infrastructure, and then a final load test. Nothing too surprising there, but now that we know where the finish line is, we can get into how much of that is still left to be done, and more importantly, how they plan to do it. Um, there's really not that much more to do on the programming side. Uh, the code base is really, really solid. We need to get a few major systems in, um, and then we need to switch out the network stack for scalability. 
Um, we have a homegrown, world-class, you would not believe it, quality networking stack um, that we've created that we have we have just abused and crushed and proven that it's highly scalable. It's actually an enabler uh, for us, and uh, we need to make that switch. Um, but making that switch is a big commitment because it's kind of all hands on, on deck, uh, and we can't really be doing much else uh, while we're doing that, and it's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. So, um, you know, we are uh, coming up on the point where uh, we can kind of uh, pause a few things and, and do it. Um, it's major surgery. Uh, it's going to break a lot of things, and then, you know, we're going to have to go back and fix them. But coming out the other end, it's going to be so much better. And it will, uh, it will make the game scalable to a point where... Um, technological bottlenecks, networking bottlenecks will not be the challenge. Instead, it will be social population density that could be the challenge. And so it becomes more about designing zones so people don't get clogged up and they flow. Um, and, and uh, you know, we don't end up with too many people in a zone because it's it's a social challenge for the game rather than being a technological challenge. We do have quite a bit of world building to do still. Um, and that will always, you know, MMOs, content, content, content. Yeah, Just, that's it. Um, getting enough content in there and keeping enough content in there for expansions, uh, for people to consume. Um, that's always the biggest challenge with MMOs. Um, so, you know, world building. Um, you know, Jimmy has kind of pioneered this process. Uh, Jimmy Lane's pioneer, pioneered this process using Houdini uh, to semi-automate uh, or make more efficient um, a lot of the world building. Um, that's something that um, you know, little companies like uh, Visionary Realms don't typically do. That's big company stuff, and uh, that's a big deal for us. Um, it'll allow us to make. Uh, more content or uh, the target content faster or more cheaply or you know however you want to slice and dice it um, it's a it's a big win for us he went on to further explain how being truly ready for alpha isn't just about the game itself being ready but also the infrastructure of the company being ready so that includes having enough customer service community management back-end support etc to be able to handle the huge influx of players and all the new accounts and bug reports and feedback that will inevitably come along with them in that press release about the new seven-figure investment, Visionary Realms also revealed that there are over 8,000 people currently signed up for Alpha. That's a big step, and they're well on their way, but there's a lot riding on it going smoothly. This is all about momentum, so if the game is in a good spot, and it's received well by the players, and the press, and everyone watching, then they'll be in a great spot to propel forward to beta and then launch. But of course, one step at a time. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm gonna urge Visionary Realms to release a public roadmap as soon as possible so that we as a community can follow along with their progress as they advance toward Alpha. The hurdles between here and there seem to be pretty well defined at this point, so I'd love to see all those lined up in chronological order to visualize the sequence of events. There doesn't even need to be any dates attached to them, just something so that when the team says that such and such step has been completed, we can actually see what that means and what's left before alpha. Anyway, if you want to listen to the full roundtable, I'll provide a link to it in the description. It's really nice to hear directly from the CEO himself, and he said he's going to try to do this sort of thing more often in the future, which I think is great. There's a lot more interesting input from this interview that I just couldn't fit in this video. So until the next one, stay curious and adventure on.